There's a common misconception that having aggressive caching on a dynamic site is the same as a static website. The truth is more nuanced and I'm going to dive into it. Let's start by looking at how a static website is served to the user. So here we have our user. Let's say they make a request for the homepage. Uh, so it goes to our server. Then it hits our web server, which we're using Nginx. Nginx says, do I have index.html? Okay, here it is. Okay, I'm gonna return it to the user. It's very simple um, setup. Nginx is just looking for files. If they exist, it will return it. If it doesn't, it will send back a 404. In the modern web, most static websites are created using a static site generator. These give us some of the power of a dynamic system, but all the benefits of a purely static website. So we can have layouts, we can have posts and markdown files, we can pull in data from APIs, we can process CSS, um, and here we've just got some regular pages. So the way it works is we have our source files here, we run our static site generator on those source files. Here we're using a static site generator called Eleventy, and then it outputs a purely static website. Then we can transfer this, these files to our server and we have our static files on our web server ready for requests. Let's look at how a dynamic approach works. So we've got our user again, they hit the server and then the web server. This time we've configured PHP to process the request. So PHP fires up, which kicks off WordPress. That starts building the layout. Now it needs content, so it gets it from the database, brings it back into WordPress, it finishes processing the page, hands it back, hands it back, and now back to the user. So there's a lot more pieces to this, but it also gives you a lot more flexibility because you can process each request for each individual user. Let's look at adding a CDN to our approaches. So a CDN is a content delivery network, and it's a global network of nodes that can sit in front of our server to reduce the request and response times. So here we have our same user making the same request. It goes to the closest node to my geographic location, which then forwards the request onto the server. And from here, it's the same. It hits Nginx, finds the file, returns it, returns it back to that edge node, which then caches it, which means it saves it. So future requests, um, it knows what that response is gonna be um, and then returns it to the user. So that's the first request. Now I get a second request that's exactly the same. Um, so the user makes that request. Now it hits that edge node, but it's already cached. So instead of going all the way to the origin server, um, it already knows what the response is, so it can just return it from there. And that request and response will be very, very fast. So adding a CDN in front of a dynamic solution is quite similar. So we'll run through it. The user makes the same request, gets to the edge node that's closest to their geographic location, forwards it to the server. It goes through all of these parts, generating the page all the way back, caches it because we're we've configured very aggressive caching. Um, so it's gonna be on this edge node and then returns it to the user. Now the second request comes in, exact same request for the same page, hits the edge node, the edge node already has it, returns to the user. So as you can see, in both the static and the dynamic, that second request is exactly the same. It's very fast, it's only going to the edge network. And that's where this common assumption that those two approaches are equal comes from. Let's look at why that's not the case. Let's start off with performance. So as we know, the first request on the dynamic approach is probably gonna be slower because it has to do a lot more processing. But the second request after that is gonna be very fast and equivalent to the static approach. So it really doesn't sound that bad where you have one slow request and then everything after that is very fast. But it's a little bit more complicated than that. Let's say you're using Cloudflare for your CDN. Cloudflare has over 150 data centers and each data center is gonna need to hit the origin to cache it. So for one file, we potentially have 150 requests for it before it's fully cached. And if you have a 10 page website, now we're talking about 1,500 requests that are gonna have that slower experience. On top of that, 
there's no guarantee that the CDN is going to keep those files in their cache, particularly if your site doesn't get a huge volume of requests. It doesn't make sense for it to keep a response in its cache for a month if you've only had two requests to that data center over the month. So there might be a lot more of that first request case than you would expect. Let's talk about security next. Static websites are known for being very secure simply because there's really not a lot of moving parts. And because of that, there's much less surface area that a hacker could exploit. Whereas with a dynamic solution, at every point in this chain is a potential vector for a hacker to exploit. The CDN does offer some protection. It can prevent DDoS attacks. It can prevent known attacks like SQL injection. But that doesn't mean this is armored plated and invulnerable to attack. Every point in this chain, security needs to be a concern. Let's talk about stability. With the static site, because I'm pre-building it, I'm going to know about any build issues before it hits the server, because it's building the entire website before a request is ever made. With the dynamic approach, I can only gain confidence that the full request response cycle works after that first request. And even then, there's no guarantee that it will work into the future. Maybe an API that I was relying goes down. Maybe there's issues with the database. More moving parts means more potential failure too. In order to reduce complexity, it's always a good idea to try and make things more static if you can. So here, let's try swapping our web framework out for Laravel and our database out for SQLite. So WordPress is this huge framework with a lot of moving pieces. And Laravel is a framework that helps you build web applications. So it's much lighter weight and thus less moving pieces. MySQL to SQLite is similar. Instead of having another application running on my server and relying on that, SQLite is just a file on my server. We could take another step and remove the database altogether, make it even more static. The point is, this is not black and white. It's a spectrum from static to dynamic. And the more static you get, the easier it is to be more secure, performant, reliable, and just have less complexity. And the more dynamic you make something, the more flexible, personalized, interactive, and likely the more complexity you'll have. There's no right or wrong of where a website sits on the spectrum. It's simply trade-offs. And for some use cases, Certain trade-offs make sense. For others, a different set of trade-offs make sense. And it's really important not to oversimplify this because you lose a lot of the nuance and conversations about the trade-offs. I want to finish with an analogy. When I was 13, I got a skateboard for my birthday and it was amazing. And I wasn't a very good skateboarder. I couldn't do the tricks, but I really enjoyed taking things apart and putting it back together. And a skateboard is very simple. Um, if you have a socket wrench, there's really only a few bolts that you can undo. So I would take my wheels off, clean the bearings, put them back on. And no one taught me how to do that. It was just very intuitive. And if we think about modes of transport, at the complete other end of the spectrum is a space rocket. Now, there's no one person that understands every single piece of how a space rocket works. These space companies have thousands and thousands of some of the world's smartest people working on this technology. There's a whole spectrum of methods of transport between these, of course. There's the bicycle. And if you're willing to watch a series of YouTube videos, you can probably figure out how to do a lot of maintenance on your bike. But there are also specialist bike mechanics because a lot of people don't have the time, ability or interest to fix their bike. Then we have a car. And only the most enthusiastic, knowledgeable home mechanic can fix their own car. Most of us have their car maintained by a specialist, a mechanic who does this every day and knows everything about how a car works. None of these approaches are good or bad. They just have different trade-offs, different levels of complexity and different goals. So let's talk about approaches to serving a website in the same way. Thanks.